Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we'll take a look at the new Sovault SV05 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to get a first look at the new Soval SV05. Big thanks to Soval for sending this over to me so I could show it to you. So first, let me tell you a little bit about the SV05. It's kind of like a Creality Ender 5 Pro. Okay, it's a lot like a Creality Ender 5 Pro in that they share a number of features. It's a big cube-shaped printer, but it's not using a Core XY motion system. This is still a Cartesian printer with separate motors controlling the X, Y, and Z axes. It's a bed dropper, not a bed slinger. That means instead of the bed moving backward and forward during a print while the nozzle moves left, right, and up, the bed moves down while the nozzle handles the left, right, forward, and back motion. It has a bitmapped monochrome screen and knob control panel. The build volume is 220 millimeters on the X axis, 220 millimeters on the Y axis, and 300 millimeters on the Z axis. It has a 32-bit mainboard with silent stepper motor drivers, so the printer's motion system is pretty quiet. It's got a power loss recovery feature, so you can try to resume a print after a power outage. It has a removable, floppy magnetic build surface. It takes 1.75 millimeter filament, melts it, and squirts it out a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And the bed can go to 110 degrees Celsius, while the nozzle can go to 260 degrees Celsius. Keep in mind this printer has a PTFE lined heat break in the hot end, so the highest temperature I recommend printing at is 235 or 240 degrees. So those are the features it shares with the Ender 5 Pro. Now, here's what it has extra that the Ender 5 Pro does not. It has a belt tensioner on the X axis. It has a CR touch bed probe. It has a plain glass plate you can use instead of the magnetic print surface, so if you like printing on plain glass, they've got you covered. It has a direct drive extruder instead of the Bowden type, so it's more suited to printing flexible materials. And that extruder is a Titan-style extruder with a gear reduction drive to provide more torque to move filament. That gear reduction lets Soval use a thinner, lighter stepper motor on the extruder to reduce the amount of mass that has to move around during printing. Oh, that Bowden tube you see here? That is often referred to as a reverse Bowden, and it's used as a way to guide the filament into the extruder where it gets pulled in instead of the usual Bowden method of pushing filament through the tube. It also has an anti-backlash nut on the Z-axis, which helps to act as kind of a braking system. And that's handy during a power loss event to prevent the weight of the bed from being able to turn the Z-axis lead screw. In order for power loss recovery to work, the bed needs to not drop when power goes out. It also comes with the usual set of hex wrenches, a couple of spare screws, a spare nozzle, zip ties, USB cable, and a micro SD card and a USB card reader. And flush cutters. It's always nice when a printer comes with flush cutters. Now let's talk about putting this thing together. It's easy to assemble, although a little time consuming. The base and the top are already assembled, so putting it together amounts to bolting the four uprights to the base, bolting the top onto the uprights, bolting the Z-axis with the bed to the back of the printer, bolting on the power supply in the electronics box and the screen, and plugging those things together. Oh, and mounting the spool holder. It's all covered in the printed guide that comes with the printer. So no, it's not as quick to assemble as modern bed slingers where you just bolt the X and Z gantry to the base with four bolts. But it's also not horrible. You're looking at under an hour from start to finish for putting it together. And that's about on par with an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. Anyway, when you're done with the assembly, the manual walks you through loading filament, manually tramming the bed, running the auto level process to probe the bed, and setting the Z offset. 
It also covers installing the Sobol branded version of Cura, but the instructions tell you to add a Sobol SD01 printer and then change the build volume to match the 220 by 220 by 300 millimeter build volume for the SD05. So since both Cura 4 and Cura 5 include Sobol SD01, SD02, SD03, and SD04 printer profiles, I just used the standard Cura 5 from Ultimaker, added an SV01, named it SV05, and changed its build volume to match. And this works just fine. Okay, so we've covered the SV05's features, the stuff that comes with it, and the assembly, setup, and adding the printer to Cura. It's fairly straightforward stuff. So what about using the printer? Well, it's got a pretty standard build of the Marlin 2 3D printer firmware, and if you're used to Marlin on printers with these monochrome screen and knob combos, you'll feel right at home. If you're not used to the Marlin user interface on these screens, Sobol included a menu map in the manual. So if you're not sure where a particular command or feature lives, you can look for it there instead of trying to fumble your way through the menus on the screen. Not every printer manufacturer does this, and I appreciate that Sobol did. Unfortunately, like a lot of printers that include this kind of screen, there isn't a cover on the back of it, so the circuit board is exposed. There aren't any dangerous voltages present, but there are some pointy bits back there, and I wish Sobol would include a cover on the back of it. The bed seems to heat up a bit more slowly than I'm used to, taking about four minutes to get to 60 degrees Celsius, but the nozzle heats quickly, so I have no complaints there. From a videography standpoint, I like that the bed moves down, while the X and Y motion stays up at the top. This makes it super easy to shoot a video of an entire print and then condense it down to a time lapse after the print is done, or put your camera in time lapse mode and just let it run. Since the bed is moving downward, the model being printed stays centered in the frame instead of being pushed back and forth in and out of focus. It won't look quite as magical as something done with the Beagle print camera or with the Octolapse plug-in in Octoprint, but it also doesn't slow a print down by pausing on every layer for a photo op. Now, I also tested the power loss recovery feature to see if it worked. About halfway through a one-hour print, I turned off the printer and let it sit for a few seconds and then turned it on again. As soon as the printer booted, it asked if I wanted to resume or cancel. I selected the resume print option. The printer brought the bed and nozzle back up to temperature. Then it homed the tool head on the X and Y axes and resumed the print. Now the only sign that anything happened to this print is this one little loop of filament that oozed out of the nozzle and got caught on the side of the print. And that sort of thing can be easily clipped off, so I'm happy that it worked. I want to mention that I printed a few things for the printer, with the printer. First, I wanted to cover that exposed board on the back of the screen, so I printed this cover, which just snaps on. Then, to tame some of the cables, I printed a cable cover that keeps the screen's ribbon cable under control. And I printed this cable channel that snaps to the upright at the back right corner of the printer, where all the wires from the electronics box connect to the parts that get hot and move around. Hiding the cables this way really seems to dress up the printer, and all it cost me was a bit of time and some filament. To be fair, Sobol does include a small clip to hold the cables on that rear upright, but it's this little thing right here. The cables were very tight in it, and it only clips them to one spot on the upright. Now these things that I printed don't affect the performance or the function of the printer, they just make it a little neater, in my opinion. Anyway, there are links in the description if you decide you want to do something like this. So in addition to those things, I also printed other things, like McGuybeer's Caladragon. I printed it in Protopasta's Candy Apple Metallic Red HTPLA. It came out great, and this is a fun little test print. I also printed a 3D Benchy in some white PLA with no problems at all. And I found a couple of cool things on printables.com to print. Here's a bed scraper with a cool hex pattern Print it in red Polymaker Polylite PETG. This is useful for scraping priming lines and skirts off the bed without the risk of damaging the print surface. And where can you put those priming lines and skirts after you've scraped them off? Right here in this desktop trash can. This is a model I designed in Tinkercad a few years ago. I printed it in blue silk PLA from CC Tree. So now I have a shiny metallic blue trash can. 
I also wanted to print something in a flexible filament, so I grabbed some Overture TPU and printed the tire that goes on this wheel fidget spinner designed by Dan, the 3D printing dad. It's designed with voids in the wheel to hold 21 pennies. You're supposed to pause to print at a certain height and then uh, insert coin to continue. But I neglected to read the description first, so I didn't know I was supposed to do that. I guess you could say I don't have a lot of money invested in this print. Okay, that joke was a bit senseless. Despite not having the extra weight of the coins, it still works fine. <laughs> I mean, the real purpose for printing it was to print that tire in TPU. See, that's me putting a positive spin on it. And lastly, because I like this model a lot, here's Luby 3 ds Aria Dragon in gold silk PLA. Now, I showed a time lapse of it earlier, but I'm showing it again because it's cool to watch. It turned out great. There's some very slight stringing between the wingtips, but that's not bad at all. So after having spent a little bit of time with the printer, I'll share with you what I like and what I don't like about it. First off, here are the things I don't like. There's no back on the LCD. The circuit board is exposed, so I felt compelled to find and print a cover for the back of it. It takes about four minutes to heat the bed to 60 degrees C. For comparison, I timed a couple of different Ender 3 models that I have, and they take about a minute and 45 seconds to get to that temperature. There's no filament sensor on the printer, although there is a place to mount one right there on that reverse Bowden bracket. You'll have to run the wire yourself, but Soval told me they're releasing a version of the firmware that'll make use of the sensor if it's installed. Cable management leaves a bit to be desired, but there are printable files that can take care of that. So that's what I don't like about it. And here are the things I do like. The motion system is pretty quiet. Most of the noise the printer makes comes almost entirely from the fans. It has a touch probe for mesh bed leveling, and after probing, the printer uses the mesh without you having to do anything special. You won't need to probe the bed before every print. The direct drive extruder handled a variety of filaments without issue. I printed PLA, PETG, and flexible TPU with it. Soval used ferrules on the high current connections going into and out of the main board, and that made me happy to see. I've got a video here about why that's important for safety. For those who like printing on plain glass, Soval included that extra glass bed for you, but the magnetic mat, and I'm using that term to describe the removable floppy magnetic build surface, can make it easier to remove prints without having to wait for a glass bed to cool. And the manual does a good job of covering assembly and usage of the printer and even has a menu map of the commands you can use on the screen. So that's the Soval SV05. It's a good, basic, cubic frame Cartesian style printer with a strong feature set for a printer of this type. Soval said the launch price of the SV05 is $299 US, which looks to be about $50 to $100 less than the Ender 5 Pro on Creality's site. Thanks again to Soval for sending this over so we could all get a look at it. If you're interested in picking one of these up, check the link in the description. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.